Alrighty. Well, things are a little bit quiet on the work front. I know um, partially what that's about. Um, long story short, one truck blew a transmission and another one's been taken off the road. Uh, and it's questionable whether it's worth putting back on the road. And somebody said, why don't you buy another truck to him? And he said, oh, there's no other trucks out there. Um, you got one guy who I thought might have been leaving, but's probably staying. Uh, another guy who has worked for them previously, who's come back. And a young guy who I think might be somebody's brother, or something like that. Um, who was also working there. And the guy who's worked from previously and this other guy's brother, well, bang, you know, that's... Uh, they're getting plenty and uh, I'm not getting a great deal until they either get this truck roadworthy again or get the other one uh, gearbox fixed in the other one. Um, their side business is likely to fire up quite a bit in the summer because it's really a summer-based side business. That might take two, maybe even three people out of the uh, situation. Uh, and the other one is there's another guy who usually works in forestry during the warmer months and he might be going back to that. So, yeah, fingers crossed everything will all fall into place in a little while, but at the moment uh, there's not much going on. I thought I was about to be eaten alive by the welfare office, but surprise, surprise, <laughs> just because I've had a bit of work, they have back right off, and I mean back right off, um, to the point that I haven't even been in there, oh gee, for a few weeks now, probably three, four weeks. Um, <laughs> I had an appointment about uh, six weeks ago in person and I had a phone call from about two weeks ago and I got another phone call that's coming in another two weeks time. That's about it. The only remaining things have just been things that have been done online which is surprisingly very hands off for an office that usually likes to tie your knots and load you up with things to do. Um, <coughs> yeah, so anyway, I've also finished a lot of the stuff around here. Um, you know, I don't have a real need to cut a great deal more firewood. That other big bunch, that third trailer full, I threw a couple of extra on top of that, and I actually instead of giving to this other guy who's a friend of someone at work because I haven't been at work for a while um, and I haven't even asked the guy about it, I ended up dropping it off to the guy up the road. I went up there, he wasn't home, I thought I'll stuff it, so I just dropped it beside the other heap that I put up there which was the first batch I put up. Um, well, it was the first batch I gave away. Um, yeah, so anyways, I am basically going back to doing box thorn. It's one of these bastard jobs that you don't ever want to do. Um, I've been spraying a bit of it, some of the smaller plants uh, out with the cypress pines right out on the edge of the hill. Uh, just the little scraggly shit ones that are only young ones. I gave them a spray um, a couple of days ago. Actually, my stove lighter broke too for the stove. The frickin' button just collapsed in it, so I bought another one of those. Um, and I've been down there a little bit this afternoon, just cutting up a bit of this box thorn, chopping it, and rolling into a bigger heap. Um, probably won't be able to do too much more because I've got to stay up here in case I get a call, but you know, <laughs> I get. I haven't been getting many calls from work, so yeah. Often you'll never get a call before 3.30 ever, which means that I can be out of range um, basically until that time. Um, so I might get up a little bit earlier than usual tomorrow morning, 
and just get stuck into it and work on it till 3.30 and then find something else to do around here. Um, and one of the things I can do around here, I've got to take back uh, all that uh, right thing here. Is this point? Ah, no. Point the wrong. Yeah, there. All the palings and all that. I'll uh, put them back in my father's shed. Uh, I don't really have any more palings to do here. Oh, there's one little tiny bit that was water damaged um, in the old plasterboard that he had that I used to do that wall that I put all the polystyrene sheets inside of. So I've cut out that water damage piece and I've got the other piece that's supposed to fit in for it um, out of my last plasterboard sheet and I've just got to sort of glue that in and bog that in and probably repaint that which will probably be something that I'll do sort of uh, you know after that sort of 3.30 point when I've got to be in range sort of thing to get any calls but um, yeah I might go down and uh, bring up a bit of this, there's, there's other box on branches down there that I've cut that are the big, I mean the, one of the bastards I've got up before, like it's, oh gee, it's, shit, it's like five inches or more wide, uh, so I've got a bit more of that, I've got to walk up the hill, I've got a whole bunch of off cuts and stuff, initially what I used to do it just to get the bulk of it out of the way and the weight of it out of the way, I've done what you may sometimes see um, people doing with uh, like trees and stuff like that uh, where they go and cut down the tree you know and whether it's slam and chainsaw and it'll be you know four foot off the ground and the bulk of it drops and you get the weight off and then they go and chop it down right down low uh, near ground level uh, and I used to do the same thing cut the bulk of the box on off and it would sort of boom roll under the ground sort of thing and, and that would be the bulk of it off and then I come back for a second cut, maybe a week later, like I cut a whole bunch of them, um, and then I'd go along and do a second cut and put weed killer straight, you know, neat, whatever you want to call it, um, the 360 uh, directly onto the stump. So I've sort of got all these little recut pieces that are only a few inches long, and I used to burn, oh, bucket loads. I'd go down there every day and get like friggin' two or three buckets worth and throw them in the wood stove. Lo and behold, I've still got about another three buckets worth down there, so I might go down and grab those in a second uh, as well. I've just got the uh, wood stove going here. Just going to uh, put some potatoes on that. Um, something for tea tonight, dinner tonight, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Alrighty going to get up at 8 o'clock and make a go of uh, getting stuck into um, <coughs> cutting up box thorn with the uh, reciprocating saw. Um, yeah, I just sort of went back to sleep again. <laughs> and uh, probably around about, what is it? Eight past ten now. Probably around nine forty five it started raining. So yeah. I got something else to show you. Bit of uh if you don't like seeing dead things you won't like seeing it, but uh I heard a bit of a kerfuffle about twenty minutes ago. But I failed to see how she could eat that much of it in twenty minutes. And just the way it is spun right around, it almost looks like it's roadkill. So I don't know. She's going to keep trying to fight it anyway. And that's funny, there's a lot of mud on his back feet. Might not be roadkill, it might be what happens when the cat goes full bloody ninja and breaks its back up. It just doesn't look right though.
because it's got absolutely no rib cage, which just does seem strange. It should be more of a rib cage there. Another option it could actually be, because I saw a bit of, heard a bit of carry on, and this could explain a few things too. The hawks are, well, the kestrels are uh, <coughs> back and actively flying around lately, and it may have been one of their kills. And then they've gone and um, dropped it. Now, when there's a lot of food around, as was a certain year where we had about three batches of rabbits born, they actually end up with so much food that they just sort of <laughs> will drop stuff and leave it behind and not even care. Because they are by no means hungry. Um, and I wouldn't be terribly surprised if it's one that they'd got and uh, dropped and may have very well dropped it in amongst Boxthorn and been unable to get to it um, or dropped it through the plum tree out here and then couldn't really see it when they circled around and just gave up on it, you know and uh, old black kitty here may have taken advantage of it <laughs> Saw us on the back, so busy running around trying to uh, fight something that's already dead. She gets covered in bloody sawdust. <laughs> it was uh, left from um, cutting the paling boards. She's doing that whole thing like she does with the mice, where it doesn't matter if it's already dead, she's still going to fight it anyway. Just don't tip over my whipper snipper, line trimmer, buddy. Good to my line trimmer. If you want to get it out, take it out from underneath the line trimmer, dummy. Hey, you're funny, kid, ain't you? I think that's all the banging I was hearing 20 minutes ago was just her fighting with the thing like she's trying to now. Anyway, <clears throat> I may. I should do that bit of plaster, I should get on with that for start, but I may go over to the uh, Longroot house, which I've got to hand over now in about, mm. oh, literally about a week, and start cleaning up over there. Um, I usually leave it the last three days, but, you know, like, what am I going to do today if it just keeps raining and raining and raining? And if you go down there and try and deal with Boxall, which I did um, in late autumn, you know, the late fall, and uh, it was bloody pathetic. You're cutting box thorn and this, the ground is just muddy, and all you're doing is sliding, 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 trying to lift these heavy things while you've got no grip at all, and your feet are sliding as you're trying to lift these box thorn branches you cut off, and I'm not doing that same bullshit. Um, not amongst this, and it, you know, you don't really want to use cordless tools, battery operated stuff amongst slip and rain, it's just not right for it. Um, yeah, there is, I could carry some bits that are down there back up the hill, I got a few up last night, but I could carry more up, but once again, you know, you'd probably just be sliding, it's not very heavy, but, yeah. and, uh, there are ones on the flat that I can cut as well and, and put in, but, you know, I don't really want to take it out in the rain, as I was saying, even though they'd be pretty easy to move because it's only short distances on flat ground as well. But that also, you know, there's a lot of bare area there from where there was a bonfire last time, so... But anyway, I think I'll be off to the uh, on-grid house just to start cleaning things up over there. I gave it a bit of a decent clean-up a few weeks ago, and I think it probably needs a second one now anyway. So, um, you know, it was reasonably good clean-up, which means that this clean-up's going to be a lot easier, um, because most of the work was already done a couple of weeks ago, the bulk of it. I got right in and scrubbed the blooming sinks and everything, so... 
You're funny, cat, aren't you, honey? You're funny, pussy? Hmm? Okay, you get no duty. Hmm? What'll happen is I'll come back later on in the day and she would have eaten the back legs. But, uh, I've got no real troubles with the playing with dead animals in the veranda. It's when they end up under my bed that I get pissed off. <laughs> Some things that don't go in my bedroom. And dead animals are one of those things, ain't they, pussy? But I think we've learned that lesson. <coughs> I noticed a dramatic drop in the amount of cat food being eaten too. I used to use um, these little disposable plastic bowls and I've gone and got this thing there which is actually large dog bowl um, and <coughs> since Tabby Cat is no longer with us um, I keep having dreams that he's come back and stuff like this. I've had at least two dreams like that already. Um, but when it was the two of them in the smaller bowls, I used to be filling it every day, sometimes every second day. Um, and now, honestly, with just her and this big bowl, it's about once a week that I have to pour it in. So I'm just judging by the amount of blooming stuff I'm going through. I reckon he used to eat about two thirds of it, and she's only eating a third. She doesn't eat that much. Anyway, saving me a few dollars on cat food. Regardless of the fact I'd still rather have me other cat, obviously, but it's, uh, it's sort of, yeah, it just sort of brings to bear how much he used to eat, and by hell, it was a hell of a lot more than her. I should be showing this, but some people don't like me showing dirty things of her trying to fight it. I got her a little, uh, well, I had it already. It was a little um, teddy bear. I don't know if it's still here or not. Um, I might have flung it out. And I used to sit it in a, uh, <coughs> it was actually an energy drink box. Um, and, you know, after the mother was uh, taken care of and all the other kittens were gone and there was just her and Tabby Cat, I uh, used to encourage her to go in this little box and I used to have a little teddy bear in there and I thought, oh, that'll be something for her to cuddle up to, you know, to make up for the uh, mother being gone and all that sort of stuff. And... Uh, <laughs> First thing she was doing as a little kitten in there, you know, she was only about, well, and I remember she's probably only about 16 weeks old or something like this. And I stuck this little teddy bear in there, and oh, she'll snuggle up the little teddy bear, and it'll be a bit of comfort because it's another. No, she started to sack it. <laughs> and I used to find her pouncing on it and sinking the claws into it and biting the thing and all this sort of stuff. and rolling around wrestling it on the ground <laughs> and I mean, it's, it's no different now except she does it with actual dead animals instead of stuffed toys <laughs> in there oh pussy mm. anyway enough waffle on about cats have you can see the green there there you go, it's a lovely colour green, he's like that all over the top of his wings. And I'm getting that glorious thing where there's too much light reflecting off the tiles. There he is, a uh, little tyke. He's uh, looking sort of zebrified underneath. And he just hit the back window and I was moving a bit of stuff outside and uh, Walked back to get another handful of stuff, and I thought, now that wasn't there, but I mean, 20 seconds ago, somebody was rather stunned on the ground. Where are we, buddy? Anyway, he still uh, kept laying there, and I grabbed hold of him, and then he sort of almost recognised that somebody had a hold of him. And, uh, yeah, he's just trying to get 
one of his claws around me yeah, fingers here. It's a beautiful blooming iridescent green. And I think you, buddy, are called a silver eye, I believe. Anyway, I think you might be out of your days by now. You can tell we're out of the days. If the head turns with the camera, it's one of the... <laughs> yeah, he's turning his head, I can tell. <laughs> oh, well, I'll let you outside. Yeah, I can feel your legs moving now. I'll let you outside, buddy.